Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is a special thing that McCall pointed out that we should probably let the, the virtual people show up and talk and say their piece. I wanted to let you guys say how the experience has been so far. Um, clearly not ideal, but I'm looking at you, but you're back here. Um, so put up your hand if you want to talk, and then I will call you out, and then you can unmute and say your piece, and we can go back and forth and see how it goes. Sound good? I'll put it, your hand at once. All right, Rick, you're up. Yeah, I'll say, I mean, I, I think it was actually pretty, um, aside from the initial few minutes where we couldn't hear anybody, I think it actually ran really well. And I think the video uh, was well supported. Having a mic in the audience was super important. I think it was a good, good virtual experience. Uh, kind of the same comments. It's while as comparable to actually being there, it was infinitely superior to not being there, uh, to not being able to participate at all. Um, for any of the tracks that were in, the call quality was good, audio quality was good, mic discipline was good. Um, the only thing that was a bit in the downside was that raised hands are at request to unmute were not always seen. So there was at least two sessions where. Uh, the speaker was asking, so is there any objections or anyone want to add anything? And there's me screaming into the void, um, which can be followed up on again. So that wasn't great, but I know it's also a fair to ask that someone keep an eye on the screen at all times. But it was the only thing for me that went uh, slightly negative. It, but it was overall a very positive experience. Excellent. Yeah, I can, I can, I'll second that point because there was a couple of times that Jeff wanted to talk and I was standing up with the mic and didn't see him. So if I could specifically ask, why did we opt to go for the curated unmute? Because you usually do that when you expect somebody to zoom bomb you, but we vaguely trust ourselves and if somebody oversteps, we can forcibly mute them. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think very not, well, not a lot of thought was put into this clearly. So like it was just a, you know, track people were going to be moderators and we were going to kind of so see how it worked out. So if we were giving feedback based on Nels and the feedback was we should just allow them to unmute themselves whenever they want, is that something that the remote audience would agree with or do, did you think actually having curated mute was better? So I, we, I think this is what ended up happening in like the file system thing and eventually in the file system thing it was if you unmuted you were good to go um, but this clearly wasn't the case I think the first day at all and so I, I think going forward that's a better solution at least for us because we're all we all play well together generally speaking yeah uh, Jan you want to go ahead yeah, yeah I like for the sessions where I could just unmute myself and start speaking I, th I think it was really good and the experience was much better so so I really liked it and actually overall I think it was better than I I was expecting it was really nice so, <laughs> so yeah, I have some feedback for you because it did work well, but you didn't unmute your video, so we couldn't see you talking. We just heard this disembodied voice from around the room. It helps the <laughs> on when you're doing that. Just for so, us yeah, audience. yeah, I wasn't actually sure whether there is something where you can see me or not, but <laughs> okay, I will know for next time <laughs> if it happens again. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. I just want to thank all the, all the remote participants who dialed in. I mean, I don't call anyone particularly out by name because, you know, so, some of you are, um, you know, I, I don't want to miss anyone, but the people who have dialed in, particularly those for whom it's after midnight, I mean, I, I really appreciate you putting in all, all the effort to, you know, to participate as well as you have because you, you, you've made this such a better conference and it, 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 would, it would be so much worse without you. And, you know, hoping to see you all in person next year, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, sweet tea, you're up, man. Uh, as a new person, I thought it went way better than I was uh, expecting it to. I, I'm i more comfortable interacting via text than via voice. And I, I felt that uh, having a Zoom chat available that sometimes got read to the room was really great. Um, it would be nice if people introduced themselves before they made uh, comments on the mic, but that's kind of a difficult to ask, hard to remember and stuff. But um, as a new person, it 
might have been a little bit easier to know who was who that way. That's all. So if I can ask about the chat, one of the problems we had in the room is that unless we're logged on to Zoom, which most of us aren't, we don't see the chat. So it sort of has to be read to us before we can actually respond to the points. Is, was that the way this worked okay? So just having a moderator read the chat is the better way, or would you have preferred if we could interact individually, which st stands the chance of basically becoming the hallway because everybody starts to chat over each other? Yeah, I, I thought that comments only getting read to the room if the moderator thought they were sufficiently important was a fine way and lowered my uh, fear of saying anything. I wonder if it would have been helpful if there was a way for those of us who were in person to see the chat uh, without having to log into Zoom. I, I didn't want to log into Zoom because I was afraid that might disturb things and whatnot. Uh, I think one of the benefits of the plumber's approach is the chat is not tied in to the uh, video conferencing system, so it's possible for you know the in-person, well, we, have, we haven't had in-person attendees yet, but it might be nice if we could have like gotten onto the chat um, even even though we're here in person, so we could see what was going on uh, in terms of comments from by the remote attendees. And sometimes having a chat back channel is not the worst thing in the world, uh, even if there's a foreground conversation happening, uh, you know, on the audio. Yeah. So the kind of the original idea was that I was going to have a separate IRC thing, but I was worried that, given how well all of you read your emails that that information was going to get lost in translation, so we, I opted for this because I cannot count how many of you asked me where the, the calendar is when it was clearly in the email. So it was four paragraphs down. It was four paragraphs down. God forbid you read the entire email. Yeah, but the, the preceding three paragraphs were all Linux <laughs> Foundation policies. It's not surprising we did stop <laughs> after uh, a couple of You know, I'm just as guilty as the rest of you. I'm, I'm just giving you shit. All right, last meal. Hi, uh, I was on mostly in the MM track, and uh, I've noticed that uh, the session was uh, like led by a remote person, then then the Zoom was uh, in a mode where everybody could unmute without the uh, without raising hand, and it was really much uh, simpler to contribute. So. Uh, I had to, so that offered a comparison. Some sessions were like this, some not, and I would prefer the the, the easier unmute. Uh, otherwise, I can uh, only repeat that uh, what others said that uh, it was much better than I would hope for. So thank you for all the effort that went into supporting the remote. Uh, participation and uh, just uh, one uh, need uh, for the video part the incoming resolution was sometimes insufficient for screen sharing or some tiny fonts on slides because it was like 640 times 360 and maybe if that could be increased it would be uh, a bit better if possible. Okay. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Hong Zhang, you're up next. You're still muted, man. You're still muted. We can't hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. Um, this is my first time to attend um, and I got a precious chance to talk about my stuff and I really appreciate that. And uh, um, there are a lot of people give me really good advice and suggestions. Um, I feel really glad about that, but uh, as a, a virtual presenter, um, I could not see who is talking in the conference room. <laughs> Um, I would really like to know who is talking and uh, show my appreciation for those people. So uh, just wondering if like, uh, I really want to be in person to uh, 
to participate. But if in the future, uh, maybe is that possible? Like uh, if a virtual presenter is uh, uh, showing his stuff, is that possible to put a little camera in front to show uh, you can what's see one. in the counter? You can see one in your Zoom chat, but you see my laptop camera really does not show. Everybody in the room is so far away, they all look like little dots. Wave your hands at the camera, guys. They're actually <laughs> people. So the problem yeah. is that in order to do something like that, we'd actually need a cameraman at the front to actually operate a camera and zoom in on the person talking to you. So we, we're planning to do that for plumbers, but it costs a fairly fantastic amount of money, which is the treasure of the organization I'm still not happy about. But we will try. Yeah. But, but just to set expectations, it's really expensive. But if you think that little camera on the laptop does some good for you, we can do that facing into the room. Yeah, I, and we should have done, like I tried to, in some cases, type out who was talking, um, but we could be better about that, especially for virtual presenters. There's no reason why we couldn't just have the people that want to talk come up to where the camera is pointed. So we keep that in mind. Thank you. Thanks, man. Enzo, you're up. Hey. So yeah, it's also my, my first time attending. Uh, everything was perfect, I think, uh, content-wise was perfect. Uh, audio. Audio, there's a problem with uh, oscillating volume. Uh, it just happened now when someone else was talking. So I'm not sure if uh, it's uh, Zoom related or, or the mic setup related, but um, it, it happened uh, like in, in every hour or so. Um, and of course, the, the video, uh, as Vlastimo commented, uh, the code de demos, we, we couldn't see anything because of, of video quality. But like I said, other than that, everything was perfect. I really enjoyed and hope to, to attend next year as well. Perfect. Yeah, we had some. Thank um, you. Yeah, no worries. The, I, I noticed that like when the battery started going, the audio visual guys have been really great about running around and, and uh, recharging the batteries and putting new batteries in, and that seemed to help, so. Perfect, Jeffrey, you're up. You're on mute still. Um, reiterating a lot of the comments that have already been made, um, the volume control, the volume um, seemed to bounce around in several of the sessions, um, particularly uh, the, the table mics versus the mics in the front of the room. Um, a reminder to some of the people who are speaking who at the front of the room who kind of wander around uh, the stage. Um, they are wandering away from a microphone and uh, that, that hurts as well. Um, with regard to the, the video quality, uh, Zoom does have a high definition uh, mode that needs to be turned on. Um, I do appreciate that people kept their, their home videos off in order to uh, minimize the, the network traffic required to monitor the rooms. That, that's very, very helpful. Um, from my experience in working with other conferences over the last several years remotely, um, in particular HEPIX, uh, having a persistent um, blog or wiki that is used for collecting comments during each of the sessions is particularly helpful because the Zoom chats are not persistent. Um, it is something you can broad, you know, put up on the screen in, in the, the on-site as well. Um, and it allows people who um, might be, I don't know if these are, are being put up in, on YouTube or something, um, in semi re in semi real time to be able to go back and then add comments uh, later on when these sessions are are replayed. Um, having somebody in the room who is a, a kind of charge to be the the watcher of the tech space um, to be able to raise hands is particularly helpful. And I'll, I'll say to to, to James, um, even that small camera microphone uh, cam uh, laptop camera that's facing into the room is helpful from a feedback perspective because it gives those who are of us who are remote um, and in some indication of what's going on in the room and when somebody might, it might be a good time for us to jump in 
uh, to a conversation. But overall, absolutely appreciate the opportunity to be able to take part uh, in this. Um, you know, I would not have been able to, even if I had an invite, I would not have been able to travel uh, this year to California um, yeah, so that, for various uh, reasons. Sure. That, and, you know, we've, we've had a couple people that were meant to be here and then couldn't at the last minute because of various things. So I'm glad this has worked relatively well. Like there's definitely, we will take this feedback to heart. Um, there are a few more sessions left, so definitely there are things in like this that we can do. In the sessions, I know for sure um, you're free to unmute and stuff, and then we'll I can set up there with a, a camera for the remaining file system sessions. So, thank by you. The way, for those of you who went to other conferences, how does the video technology compare with the way other conferences have been, tried to do it? So, I think OSS uh, OSS US was a bit of a disaster because it was chat only. Uh, which really didn't help for the interaction. Zoom really helps when we can see you because it's the interaction is two-way. But would you have any other recommendations for technologies, things you liked, things you didn't like? You know, just if you don't, if you don't say now, we're just going to do what we think is best anyway, and you may or may not like it. Um, <coughs> generally, the quality was uh, was fairly good, uh, better than average. Um, Vlastimil mentioned it earlier, the main time that it got hung up is if the presenter was showing terminal text. Um, you could make it out, but by the time you'd have made it out, whatever point the presenter was making would have moved on from it. Um, so either presenters would need to use a larger font or the video needs to be higher resolution and hopefully whatever hotel that uh, we're in at the time has sufficient bandwidth to make that work. Yeah, we bought 300 megabits for Ireland outbound. Um, so turn up for, that. for plumbers? Yeah. I won't be able to make it. I can tell you why offline. Okay. I know I'm living the country, but I'm not going to be able to make it. I don't know if you guys just want one or two quick comments, just because the AV team does this all the time. I don't want to step over my bounds, but it's up to you. No, go for it, man. Two, just two things that have been brought up. Having a dedicated Zoom screen, so we're not trying to share this screen with your presentation and Zoom. Zoom could just stay up all the time, okay? Right, and people can decide whether they turn the cameras on and off, and it's not too cost prohibitive. Okay. And then the other thing is to have what we call a Zoom ambassador, someone in whether they're here or in that Zoom call to do all the pinning, make sure that they take ownership of that. That'll make the you know it flow. Okay. Thanks for letting me speak. Yeah, no worries. And like, and I definitely want to make call you guys out. The AV guys have been fucking fantastic. Like, it is they have done a superb job. It's been very easy. Any of the problems that we might have had is mostly just been from you know me. Right. Yeah, no, we really enjoyed it too. Thanks for having me. Of course. It's really helpful to have somebody reading in the chat. You're welcome. All right, cool. Well, uh, we've got 10 minutes to the next thing. Um, does anybody have anything else that they want to say before? We, yeah, what's up, man? Um, just would be good also from the in-person attendees to, to see some sort of global chat for for the events. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to organize with people who are who are remote and people who are in the in the event. You know, when we're not in the in the sessions and we're not in the same place, just to be able to say hello, a Slack, IRC, something like that. Yeah, I can set up a Facebook chat group. Huh? That's fine. Yeah. Everybody uses that, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Rick, uh, I was gonna say one more thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you think this worked pretty well just because of the ratios? Like it was, it was, like if it was 50-50 virtual versus not. Like we, here we had like maybe 10% virtual. Is that part of why it worked so well? There's a small cadre of people that we trusted on online. I, I think that's part. You know, it, I think it is definitely part of it, right? Um, I, it, you know, for the file system track, like I miss Jan, right? And then Jan has been able to talk more today, and that's been good. Um, so we definitely have talkative people that are on, that are virtual, and they're able to participate.
Mars. Hey, that makes me happy. I know that Mel also has been able to participate a lot in MM, so I, I mean, has that gone pretty well for you guys? Yeah, so like, yeah. but uh, you know, again, like we're talking about one or two or three guys. Right, right, yeah. So if it was more than that, it, yeah, it might have gotten hairy. It might have gotten hairy, yeah. So. Uh, Rick, <coughs> go ahead. Yeah, and I, I was just going to to chime in a, you know, a, a word of appreciation for um, the fact that being virtual gives you flexibility. Like I was at a face to face meeting for Facebook on in LA last week, came back COVID positive and feel fine, but about a quarter of the people were positive, but it meant that you can come out of that without um, being too uh, un undone. Also encourage people to put their mask back on the flights, unlike me, <laughs> you know, did not, my, my double vax status did not hold up. Yeah, but it's nice to have, I, I would agree, having a few people virtual is means that we can take part without dominating it. Yeah, I, I definitely like that. And I think that like the times that, you know how it can be awkward when we're all on calls or whatever, and my way knows to start and stop or whatever. I, we haven't had that problem really because there's so few of us, right? So the thing I've really found about uh, virtual problems is I just can't do time zone shifting easily from home because for a remote conference, you're expected to get up for work the next day and it's going on to midnight. It just, I, I just find I can't do it. So for virtu fully virtual events, we try to reduce the amount of time we spend in sessions each day to maximize the time zone overlap. But obviously that still doesn't work for somebody right around the opposite side of the world from the time zone we picked. And unfortunately for in-person events, the expense of the hotel means that we couldn't afford to stay here for five days. We can barely afford to stay here for three days. But how did you find the sort of nine to five nature of this? Because it is pretty extreme on most people who have to stay up for really odd hours for this. Yeah, especially John. Holy shit, I'm surprised you're on here still. Yeah, that's probably a question mostly to the Europeans. I don't think we've got anybody from Asia. Um, I, I, I don't think, to, despite the fact I'm a virtual attendee, I don't think uh, we should try and compromise for uh, to favor or accommodate virtual attendees. Yeah, the full day of work followed by a full day conference after is crippling, but I'm a virtual attendee and that's what I signed up for. Um, if, if we, if they, the, the primary value of LSFMM for, for me in the past um, is the in-person aspect because discussions can happen into the evening. And that's not possible as a virtual attendee, but suck it up. Um, that's, the, that's the compromise that was made. Um, I don't... It, we could do camera I'm not too pushed about the camera, but I had the advantage that I could almost almost always recognize the voice of who was speaking and I didn't need to see them. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to see them so I could judge the reaction, but unless they're right up against the camera, I'm not going to be able to judge their facial reaction anyway. So it, it, it wouldn't, it, it's not something that's very important to me, but I think that the duration of the day should remain the same and favor those that are physically present. Okay, and that brings up one other point, because you did mention the social events, which are an important way of getting face-to-face -face with people for detailed discussions. Hallway track is another. You didn't really see what went on in the hallway track as we discussed things. Would you have any recommendations for how we should try and integrate a hallway track into a conference like this so remote attendees can participate? I think it's going to be really difficult, but I think it's something we should think about because it's often been said that the hallway track is half the value of plumbers. And indeed, if you're Christoph Helbig, it's pretty much the whole of the value of plumbers. Yeah, I, think, yeah. um, I, I don't think, it, for me at least, the camera wouldn't have helped because I can't actually interact with anyone there. And, it, and I think it would have compounded the fact that I was remotely present. It all seems to be kind of a little creepy to be looking at people in the, in the hallway via camera. There's I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I'd be uncomfortable doing it virtually. And if I was physically present, I'd be slightly creeped out with the idea that I've been watched, particularly as you're in a more, more relaxed format then. You're not, you're not in the conference itself. You're not necessarily watching your mannerisms. Um, I, I don't think it would be a good thing. It, it, it's a downside of if you're virtual. Um, you're experience is going to be degraded no matter where we look at us and if we make the virtual attending part too accommodating it will discourage more and more people being physically present and ultimately then the conference will become a virtual conference and it'll lose all value so um i i, I would be against sticking up cameras and all for the for always you're not there you don't get the hallway track it's too bad you are virtual 
but others I, might feel differently. They, they, I'm, I've been around for a while, so I have like a, a fair amount of history and have something to compare it to. Uh, other people might feel very differently about this. What about hallway Zoom sessions like the like plumbers have? At least the remote attendees can mingle. Yeah, I, I mean, like Mel says, I think that there's, it's just going to be a less, right? And I think that's okay. The virtual thing, you know, I've wanted to do this for years and like have a way for people that aren't able to travel to come, but with the knowledge that it was not going to be perfect. Being here is the perfect and getting this was really good and there's some things we can do to improve it, but I think kind of bending over backwards to make it exactly the same is just going to diminish from the people that are here. Cool. Uh, Jeffrey, you want to say something? Yeah, I just w wanted to add, um, with regard to James's uh, question earlier about how this compared to other conferences, um, one of the things about this conference is that the talks are very dynamic and they are very much on the fly. So anything that, re that requires a pre-recorded or um, pre-designed demo to be played uh, in parallel really doesn't work here. For the online HEPEX conferences, the, for, with regard to the hours, um, the way that those were handled for online is to split uh, the hours so that there's a very early morning session for Europe, a session for Asia, and a session for, for the US scattered over 24 hours over four days. Um, that's exhausting and doesn't really fit well for an in-person. Um, I agree with Mel that the, uh, the in-person benefit is the place you wanna be. You don't wanna degrade that. Um, what would be helpful from the, the hallway from my perspective is that if you did have this kind of wiki or blog, um, People either summarize their discussions to that, to the mailing list, or um, provide some way of saying, hey, we're talking about XYZ right now. If you want to join in, you know, come, come join this breakout room or something uh, that somebody could set up on, on their phone or their laptop. Might be, it might be an interesting idea, but possibly a lot of work. 